This video is a comprehensive guide to the most frequently asked questions in interviews for maintenance technician roles. It provides clear, concise, and effective answers, giving you a competitive edge in your job search. 1. Can you describe your experience and background in maintenance work? My background in maintenance work is extensive and multifaceted. It started with basic tasks while I was still in school, allowing me to learn the fundamentals of the role. Post-graduation, I secured a position with a local manufacturing company, where my responsibilities expanded significantly. I was tasked with maintaining a variety of equipment, from HVAC systems to production machinery. This role required me to quickly become proficient in diagnosing and repairing a wide range of malfunctions, as well as performing regular preventive maintenance. I also had the opportunity to work on multiple team projects, which helped me develop strong collaboration and communication skills. Throughout my career, I've always prioritized staying updated on new maintenance techniques and technologies, and I've regularly taken advantage of training opportunities to ensure I'm providing the best service possible. 2. What types of equipment and machinery are you most familiar with? I am highly proficient in handling various types of machinery and equipment. My expertise includes working with HVAC systems, electrical systems, hydraulic systems, and conveyor systems. I am also comfortable working with various types of power tools and diagnostic equipment. In addition to this, I have considerable experience working with computerized maintenance management systems, CMMS, which are often used to track and manage maintenance tasks. I believe this diverse range of experience would be beneficial in ensuring the smooth operation of any facility's machinery and equipment. 3. How do you prioritize multiple maintenance requests or tasks? In managing multiple maintenance requests or tasks, my priority always goes to those tasks that affect the most critical operations or present the most significant safety concerns. For less urgent tasks, I use an organized system to ensure that everything gets attended to in a timely manner. This might involve grouping similar tasks together or scheduling tasks based on the availability of necessary resources or personnel. It's important to communicate clearly with all parties involved about the expected timeline for completion. Regular updates help to manage expectations and ensure that everyone is on the same page. 4. Can you walk me through your typical process for diagnosing an equipment malfunction? In diagnosing an equipment malfunction, my initial step is to collect all necessary information. This includes understanding the symptoms, when the problem started, and any changes in the equipment's operation. I then review the equipment's documentation and schematics, if available, to gain a deeper understanding of its function. I'll also check the equipment's history of maintenance and repairs. Subsequently, I perform a visual inspection to identify any obvious issues such as leaks, breaks, or wear and tear. I also listen for any unusual sounds. The next step involves using diagnostic tools to conduct further tests. Once I've identified the problem, I develop a plan for the repair gather the necessary tools and parts, and carry out the repair. Afterwards, I test the equipment to ensure it's working properly and document the entire process. This serves as a record for future reference and helps in tracking recurring issues. It's important to note that safety precautions are always observed throughout this entire process. 5. What preventive maintenance strategies do you employ to minimize downtime? In my previous role, I utilized a systematic approach to preventive maintenance, which significantly minimized downtime. My primary strategy involved the regular inspection of equipment to identify any signs of wear and tear. By catching potential issues early, we were able to fix them before they resulted in significant downtime. I also kept a strict schedule of routine maintenance, as outlined in the equipment's user manuals. This usually included cleaning, oiling, and replacing any worn out parts. Additionally, I used a computerized maintenance management system to track each equipment's maintenance history. This way, we could predict when certain parts were likely to fail and replace them proactively. All these steps help to reduce unexpected breakdowns and minimize downtime. 6. How do you ensure compliance with safety regulations in your work? My approach to ensuring compliance with safety regulations is rooted in my commitment to a safe work environment. I always start by familiarizing myself with the relevant safety regulations for each task, as well overall industry standards. This involves regular review of safety guidelines and training materials, as well as staying updated on changes in safety regulations. During work, I adhere strictly to these safety protocols, making sure to use the proper protective equipment and follow the correct procedures for handling machinery and equipment. I also make it a point to regularly inspect the workplace for any potential safety hazards and take immediate action to address them. Lastly, I believe in fostering a culture of safety among the team by encouraging everyone to prioritize safety and report any safety concerns. 7. Can you give an example of a complex repair you've successfully completed? Indeed, I have handled numerous complex repairs throughout my career. One that stands out is when I was tasked with fixing a malfunctioning conveyor system in a manufacturing company. This was a critical piece of machinery, and its breakdown had halted production. Preliminary inspection didn't reveal much, so I had to dismantle the entire system to get to the root of the problem. 
Eventually, I identified the issue as a worn-out bearing that had caused misalignment in the conveyor belts. After replacing the bearing and reassembling the system, it resumed normal operation. This experience not only tested my technical skills but also my problem-solving and decision-making abilities. It was gratifying to successfully complete the repair and see the production line running smoothly again. 8. How do you stay updated on new maintenance techniques and technologies? Staying updated on new maintenance techniques and technologies is critical in our fast-paced world where advancements are made daily. I make it a part of my responsibility to keep abreast of the latest developments in our field. I subscribe to numerous industry-specific newsletters, attend webinars and workshops, and participate in online forums and communities where professionals share their knowledge and experiences. I also take advantage of any training opportunities that my company offers. By doing so, I ensure that I am always equipped with the most current knowledge and skills to deliver high-quality work. Additionally, I maintain strong relationships with equipment manufacturers and suppliers. They often provide valuable information about the latest products and technologies, which can significantly improve maintenance efficiency and effectiveness. In the age of digital transformation, I also actively explore how digital technologies can be leveraged for maintenance work. For instance, I have been learning about the use of predictive maintenance technologies in Internet of Things, IoT, in equipment maintenance. This not only enhances my technical skills but also enables me to contribute more strategically to my organization. 9. What's your approach to troubleshooting intermittent issues? My approach to troubleshooting intermittent issues revolves around methodical and systematic problem-solving strategies. I begin by gathering as much information as possible about when and where the issue occurs. This often involves speaking to the users experiencing the issue, observing the problem in action, and reviewing any error logs or system data. Then, I try to reproduce the problem consistently, as this makes it easier to identify what's causing it. If I can't reproduce it consistently, I will try to isolate the variables and identify patterns or trends. Once I've identified the cause, I can then develop a solution to fix the problem. Throughout this process, communication is key, keeping relevant parties informed of the progress and any potential impact on their work or equipment use. 10. How do you handle emergency repair situations? In the face of an emergency repair situation, my first step is to ensure everyone's safety by following the required safety protocols. I then assess the situation to understand the severity of the issue. This helps me to prioritize tasks effectively and make a decision on the immediate actions to be taken. If necessary, I isolate the equipment or machinery to prevent further damage or potential harm to others. Next, I use my expertise and skills to identify the root cause of the problem. This could involve troubleshooting, consulting technical manuals, or leveraging my past experiences. Once I identify the cause, I repair the machinery or equipment swiftly and efficiently. After repair, I double-check everything to ensure the problem is thoroughly resolved and the machinery or equipment is safe to use. Lastly, I document the issue, the steps taken, and the solution implemented. This serves as a reference for future similar occurrences and helps in better handling of such situations. In situations where external expertise is needed, I don't hesitate to consult or escalate the issue to them. I believe in learning from every situation, hence, post-handling the emergency, I use the experience to better equip myself and prevent such occurrences in the future. 11. Can you describe your experience with predictive maintenance techniques? In my previous role as a maintenance technician, I utilized various predictive maintenance techniques to ensure optimal equipment performance. I used vibration analysis to monitor the condition of rotating equipment such as motors or pumps. I also employed infrared thermography to detect issues with electrical systems or insulation. Additionally, I used oil analysis on mechanical systems to determine the condition of the lubricant and identify potential issues such as contamination or wear. These predictive techniques allowed me to address issues before they became major problems, reducing downtime and saving resources. 12. How proficient are you with computerized maintenance management systems, CMMS? I consider myself very proficient with CMMS with over five years of experience using such systems, I have learned to effectively manage and track maintenance activities. By using CMMS, I can schedule and monitor maintenance tasks, manage inventory, and generate detailed reports on maintenance work. This helps to streamline maintenance operations and improve efficiency. For example, in my previous role, I used CMMS to track the maintenance history of all equipment, which helped identify patterns and predict potential breakdowns. This proactive approach reduced equipment downtime, leading to increased productivity. I am also comfortable with various CMMS software, including Maximo and SAPPM. I am always keen to learn new software to stay updated with the latest technology. I believe that mastering CMMS is vital for a maintenance professional in today's digital age. 13. What steps do you take to properly document maintenance activities and repairs? I understand the importance of proper documentation for maintenance activities and repairs. When I complete a task, I make it a point to record it in a detailed manner. This includes noting down the date, the specific task completed, 
the equipment or machinery involved, and any parts or materials used. In case of repairs, I also note down the problem identified, the steps taken to fix it, and the final result. I ensure this documentation is done as soon as a task is completed, to avoid any inaccuracies due to memory lapses. This meticulous documentation helps in maintaining a clear record of all maintenance work done, which can be useful for future reference, for troubleshooting, and for planning preventive maintenance schedules. I usually use a computerized maintenance management system for this documentation, as it is efficient and easy to use. I also ensure that this documentation is accessible to other team members and superiors, for transparency and effective communication. 14. How do you determine when equipment should be repaired versus replaced? In assessing whether equipment should be repaired or replaced, I consider various factors. Firstly, I look at the age of the equipment. Older equipment might be more cost-effective to replace than repair. Secondly, I assess the condition of the equipment. If it's in poor condition, replacement might be a better option. I also take into account the cost-effectiveness of repair versus replacement. If the cost to repair is more than half the cost of a new unit, I usually recommend replacement. Finally, I consider the impact on productivity. If the downtime for repair significantly hinders productivity, replacement could be the best course of action. 15. Can you explain your familiarity with electrical systems and circuitry? I have solid experience in dealing with electrical systems and circuitry. During my tenure as a maintenance technician, I've had the opportunity to work on various electrical systems, from simple circuits to complex industrial machinery. My understanding of electrical principles allows me to troubleshoot and repair these systems effectively. I've also worked extensively with circuit diagrams, which are essential for understanding and resolving issues within an electrical system. I have attended several training programs to further enhance my knowledge and skills in this area, and I make it a point to stay updated on the latest advancements in electrical technologies. 16. What experience do you have with HVAC systems? I have extensive experience with HVAC systems, having worked on them for over 10 years. I am skilled in diagnosing issues, performing regular maintenance, and carrying out repairs. I am proficient with both residential and commercial HVAC systems, and I am familiar with a wide range of brands and models. I have also dealt with a variety of issues, from minor fixes to major system overhauls. This experience has allowed me to develop a comprehensive understanding of these systems and how to effectively maintain and repair them. 17. How comfortable are you with reading and interpreting technical manuals and schematics? I am extremely comfortable with reading and interpreting technical manuals and schematics. With years of experience in the maintenance field, I have come to understand the importance of these resources. They provide crucial information that guides my work, whether I'm performing routine maintenance tasks or troubleshooting more complex equipment issues. I have often relied on them to ensure that repairs and installations are done correctly, safely, and efficiently. Dealing with a variety of systems and machinery in my career, I have developed the ability to quickly and accurately decipher these documents. They are an essential tool in my professional arsenal. 18. Can you describe a situation where you had to work as part of a team to complete a maintenance project? During my tenure at a previous job, we were assigned an extensive maintenance project requiring a complete overhaul of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC, system in a large office building. Given the scale of this project, it was necessary for me to work collaboratively with a diverse team of technicians and engineers. Coordination and communication were key elements in ensuring efficiency and effectiveness during the project. We divided the tasks based on our individual expertise and worked in tandem to minimize downtime. Despite facing a few unexpected challenges, our cohesive teamwork and problem-solving abilities allowed us to complete the project ahead of schedule, much to the satisfaction of our client. 19. How do you approach training or mentoring less experienced technicians? I believe that training and mentoring less experienced technicians is an essential part of my role. I start by assessing their skills and understanding of the tasks at hand. I then develop a training plan tailored to their needs. I try to set clear expectations from the beginning and provide constructive feedback regularly. I also encourage them to ask questions and share their ideas. I ensure that they understand the importance of safety regulations and how to use equipment properly. I believe in leading by example and always strive to demonstrate a strong work ethic and a positive attitude. 20. What strategies do you use to manage your time effectively? There are various strategies I implement for effective time management. Firstly, I always start by creating a list of tasks that need to be completed. This helps to prioritize the work according to urgency and importance. Secondly, I break down larger tasks into smaller, manageable parts. This not only reduces the feeling of being overwhelmed, but also increases efficiency as completing smaller tasks is generally quicker. Thirdly, I aim to minimize interruptions and distractions as much as possible. This means keeping my workspace clean and organized, and ensuring I have all the necessary tools and parts before I start a job. Lastly, I always allocate time for unexpected issues or tasks that may arise. This proactive approach prevents me from falling behind schedule. How do you handle situations where you're unsure how to fix a particular problem? 
If I encounter a situation where I am uncertain how to resolve a specific issue, my initial step is always to review any available documentation or manuals related to the equipment. Sometimes, this can provide the necessary guidance. If this is not sufficient, I would not hesitate to seek advice from my colleagues or supervisor. In my experience, teamwork and collective knowledge can often lead to a solution. On the rare occasion where the problem persists, I would reach out to the equipment manufacturer or conduct research online. This approach ensures that I am continually learning and enhancing my skills while also prioritizing the efficiency and effectiveness of my work. 22. Can you give an example of how you've improved efficiency or reduced costs in a previous role? In my previous role as a maintenance supervisor, I implemented a preventive maintenance strategy that significantly reduced costs and improved efficiency. Recognizing that reactive maintenance was causing expensive and time-consuming repairs, I encouraged my team to focus on preventive measures. We created a detailed schedule and checklist for routine inspections and maintenance tasks. This proactive approach drastically reduced the number of emergency repairs, ultimately saving the company time and money. We also saw an improvement in equipment lifespan and reliability, further enhancing our efficiency. Always remember, preparation and understanding of the role is key. We hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you enjoyed it, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more useful content. Best of luck on your job hunting journey.